Aggregate planning problems always work better in table format. Sometimes we get aggregate planning problems like this one that are a paragraph of information and everything that you need in that paragraph actually is in there. You might be able to figure out the answer to the question in your head, but I would draw this up as a table. Now, let's take a look what I mean. Customer demand for some finished good is forecast at 1,000 units for January, 2,000 for February, and 3,000 for March. If the company produces this finished good with nothing in inventory, so see, we're already accumulating all these facts. There was the forecast. They have nothing in inventory. Um, how much should it plan to produce in the month of March if it were to follow a level schedule with nothing in inventory at the end of March? Uh, like I had mentioned that you probably could use logic to kind of figure this out in the margin, but what I recommend is organize it into a table. Uh, always works better for me because what does an aggregate planning table look like? Okay, well, there are columns for the time units. And in this case, it's January, February, and March. Typically in aggregate planning, we start with a forecast we have some sort of production plan or that's what we're trying to decide on and there's always some issue of then the resulting inventory i wrote e inventory for ending inventory and now wait a minute that means there'll be three rows here although with inventory i remember that there's going to be an issue of what we start with right now. Oh, well, maybe I should have used a ruler for my lines. It looks a little wimbly, but that will work because what do I have? I have a framework here now. Maybe it's not very pretty, but I have a place in which to now store all these numbers because that first sentence was about the forecast. It said 1,000 in January, 2,000 in February, and 3,000 in March. If the company produces the finished good, has nothing in inventory at the beginning of January, that's what belongs in my little squished box next to the label ending inventory, right? That is the inventory ending just before January, and it said that there was nothing. Okay, so a zero gets squished into the squished box. Um, all right, what's the question? What should they produce in March? Okay, well, how am I supposed to figure out exactly what they should produce in March? They gave some hints. Follow a level production schedule. That means that logically that should be the same number in each one of these boxes for production. A level production schedule means you do the same thing each month. And there was another hint that leaves it with nothing in inventory at the end of March. My bottom row here, and let me neaten up that border on the column. My bottom row here is ending inventory each one of these periods and they, they, they sort of fixed that. They said, okay, here you want to end with absolutely nothing. Now I have everything that I need to devise what the, basically, since it's a level plan, what the production should be each month. The question only asked about March, but the answer to March will be the answer to February and the answer to January because it's a level schedule. Oh, the key is, right, it has to be the same number here, and it has to make sense that you started with nothing and you ended with nothing, which means they go back up to the top line, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. If you started with nothing and it ended with nothing, you must have over those three months produced enough to meet exactly that amount. So I want to add those together. 1,000 plus 2,000 plus 3,000 uh, is 6,000. Okay. Oh, so I want to produce 6,000 over the course of these three months because I start with nothing and end with nothing. And I want to do exactly the same thing each month. Divide that by three. That means you should, this is just logic, it's not any particular formula, deduction. That means you should produce 2,000 each month. That's the appropriate level rate. That will meet the forecast and you will end with exactly nothing, having started with exactly nothing. Oh, so actually that's the answer also to the question of what do you produce in March. 
2000. Now, I don't need to fill in the ending inventory for January and February. I've already answered the problem at this point. But just for the sake of completeness, let's take a look at that. We start ending inventory of nothing, and this will be like December. Okay, so you start January with nothing, you produce 2,000, the forecast is 1,000, so 1,000 will ship. That means 2,000 minus 1,000, we would end January with 1,000 in stock. Going into February, we'd have that 1,000. We produce 2,000, and 2,000 is what shipped out again, so it just, okay, we just keep that 1,000 in inventory going into March because in March we started with 1,000, we produce another 2,000 and then that works out absolutely perfect and that's just what I was checking. We started with 1,000, we produce another 2,000, the answer to the question, that's a total of 3,000 and the forecast is 3,000 so it's wiped out and we end with nothing just like they said. The problem after this one is, is another case of which you might just figure this out in the margin, but again, I would draw a table. Let's take a look. The XYZ firm has 56 units available of this SKU1001 available in inventory right now. The forecast of demand for SKU001 is 20 units per week for the next four weeks. You know, okay, and then I see plans to produce some certain week. I, well, again, a table. Let's see, maybe I can draw this one neater. Now, tough thing is the column in an aggregate planning table is the time periods. What are the time periods here? We have right now, okay, that's just a point in time, and we have a discussion of the next four weeks. Um, although the question is only about the end of this week, you know, for safety's sake, I'll do four weeks. I don't think we're going to need that. Big a table. But if I was tackling this problem like for the first time, well, you know, what's the harm in it? Uh, maybe I draw some cells in a table that I really actually turns out I don't need. We would still have, if we were the XYZ company, a line for forecast, a line for production. What did we decide to produce? And I'll work with displaying ending inventory. Find that's the most intuitive. All right, so. Four columns for four weeks, three lines, and I left myself a little bit of room here for that strange little business about before we even start the first week, do we have anything in inventory? Okay, so there's the framework. There's the framework for all these numbers. Right, because now I have to squeeze a 56 in here. The firm has 56 units of this KU available right now. This is the right now part of the table, you know, like before you start the columns. That's where you store facts like that. Yeah, you have 56 right now going into this situation. The forecast for demand is 20 units a week for the next four weeks. That's where I got the four columns. That's week one. This is week two. This is week three, and then this one's week four, okay? If the XYZ firm plans to produce 100 units of this SKU this week, um, okay, 100 units of production this week. This week is this first week. It's week one, this upcoming week. Oh, which means that that 100, that's their plan, belongs right there. How much of the SKU will be left in inventory by the end of this week? Um, oh, well, if they have no other plans for production, and I don't know, maybe they do and they didn't tell us, but we really don't need to know about it because, yeah, it turns out I didn't really need that whole table, but I still needed to organize this. They're asking about that. They're asking about the ending inventory at the end of this week, this first week. Oh, okay. Well, that, oh, well, now that I've organized it, I can see that, yeah, you're right. This is actually just inventory logic. What is inventory logic? It's that expression, ever helpful. Whoops, that's not going to work. 
your ending inventory you know for a certain period like this week this first week right here equals your it's really is logic your beginning inventory whatever you started the week with plus your production that week you know did you make any more or receive any more minus the demand that week you know what did you use up or what did you ship out so to answer this question Really, the only thing I needed to do was fill out this formula. I just have to make sure that the right numbers go in the right places. Because ending inventory for the end of this week is what we began this week, this upcoming week with. Where is that? That was the 56, the 56 we have right now. Okay. Plus production. Oh, well, they told us that they plan to produce 100 units this week. Yes, right there, 100 minus demand this week. This week, just the one, it would just be the one, the demand of 20. Oh, actually there's the means to answer my question because it's 156 minus 20. 156 minus 20 is an ending inventory of 136. That's the answer right there to the question. We could, right, and actually I could put it in the table it belongs right there. I could continue to fill out the table if I wanted to. I've answered the question in that sense we're done. In that if they didn't have any other plans for production naturally the ending inventory for week two would be well they begin with this 136 take out another 20 it'll go down to 116 and then for the third week they'll begin with that 116 take out another 20 and what is that it'll knock it down to 96 and so on um, so you could do that if you want just for practice uh, we already answered the question don't need to and actually in reality we don't even know that they don't have other plans for production which would mess up those inventory numbers anyway uh, in that they didn't, wouldn't have to tell us in order to accurately answer this question.